Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this video I'm going to show you how you can take your sunset images and take them from what we have in front of us which is a fairly drab cool looking image to something a little bit more punchy, a little bit more dramatic just by using the tone curve. So this is where we start and this is where we end up. You can see it's a much more dramatic, much warmer, much more impactful image. So I'm going to take you step by step through how we do that just by using the tone curve in Lightroom. Now you're not limited to Lightroom, you can use exactly the same effect inside Photoshop itself and you'll get pretty much exactly the same result. So whichever program you're working with, you can just boost your sunset images and give them some real drama. So let's check all that out now. So this is our starting point, and as you can see, it looks like a pretty dramatic sunset, but we're not really getting that kind of sense of impact that we really want from it. The overall tone of the image is a little bit cool, even though you've got that nice, vibrant sun in the background, we're kind of losing all that. Now we could just bump the contrast up, we could just bump the saturation up, but you're not really going to get the best results. Your much better results are going to be coming from using the tone curve or the curve in Photoshop. So what we're going to do is in the develop module we're going to come to the tone curve and we're going to take a look at using the channels independently. Now in a lot of the videos I've covered we just use the overall tone curve in the RGB mode. So we're just adjusting the red, green and blue together so everything is tied to each other. What we can do ensuring we're in the point curve mode which you can do by enabling this little icon in the right hand corner to switch between the two modes. We can change this over to deal with the RGB and the red, green and blue channels independently. So you'll see at the moment we're looking at the RGB channel, which is the combined channel. If we click on there, we can choose the red. You can see now the histogram changes to show us that we're dealing with just the red tones in the image. And the same then for the green and blue. So one of the main benefits that we have when we're working with the tone curve is the ability to not only just influence the color that we've chosen, for example, red, green, or blue. We can also change colors inside our image, inside the various different tone elements. So if we take a look at the tone curve, the top right-hand corner are the light points of our image. The bottom left-hand side are the dark parts of our image. So if we place a couple of points onto our curve, what we can do is we can work in one of two ways. We can increase the amount of the given color in the tonal range. So for example, if we take this where we're dealing with the sort of shadow area and we start to lift that up, we increase the amount of red inside the shadows. If we do it the opposite way, we bring in and influence a little bit of the opposite color on the color spectrum. So in this example, by doing that, by reducing the amount of red in there, we introduce more green into the shadow areas. So you can see now the shadows start to take on a green tinge. So we can use this to our advantage. What we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of simple curves that are going to either increase the amount of that chosen color inside a particular tonal area in the image or we're going to introduce more of the opposite so for example with the blues we might want to cut the blue back a little bit in the highlight areas for the sky and where the the sort of the sunset is and introduce more orangey reds which is the opposite of blue so let's go through the tone curves each one individually we'll leave the rgb one out until the end we'll just use that for just overall boosting or dipping the amount of dark areas or mid-tones or, or highlights and so on so let's just go in and start off with the red channel We'll go through these each individually. Now, obviously, you wouldn't generally tend to do this when you're creating your image yourself. You'll go back and forth and tweak until you get accustomed to how each one of these different channels will influence the image that you're currently working on. But for simplicity, let's go through the RGB, the red, green, and blue channels first. So in this example, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to add three additional points into each one of our tone curves, and we're going to use those five overall points per line to adjust the tonal information and the color information in the image. So we'll start off with the red channel, and what we're going to do is this is going to be quite subtle. We're just going to reduce the amount of red information and introduce a little bit of green into the shadow area. So we're just doing a small S curve. So that's bringing a little bit of green into the, the waves, so we influence a little bit more of that kind of tone in this, we get a more turquoisey kind of thing, or aqua. But what I'm going to do is increase the amount of red in the highlight area. So we're just going to give that a little bit of a boost. Nothing too much, but you can see the tone of the image changes. Let's just A, B this. So that's before, 
this is where we are. So he's already started to warm the overall tone of the image up and reduce some of the blueness in there. So next up, let's just jump over to the green channel. Now this is going to be quite a subtle alteration, but we're going to just make some, some changes in there. So like before, let's just add a couple of extra points in. And don't worry if you move the line as you add the points in there. That's kind of natural. Don't worry too much about that. Now this is going to be very, very subtle. We're just going to take the shadow information and we're going to give that ever so slight boost and we're talking tiny amounts on this and in the highlight information we're going to bring this down a bit further where the majority of the color information is and we're going to bring that down to the opposite of the greens which in this instance is adding more orangey reds in again let's take a look at before and after so you can see this is where we were this is where we are now so we're already starting to get those warm tones but the main change in this is going to be done inside the blue channel because a big part of the image is made up of blue so let's go into that add our three points in again like i say don't worry too much if it ends up moving slightly it's kind of inevitable and this is where we're going to make slightly bigger alterations we're going to go through a typical s curve what we're going to do is we're going to increase the blue in the shadows not too far with that, but we're going to introduce a little bit of blue into there. But what we're going to do is we're going to grab this highlight information and we're going to pull that down a fair old way to give us a lot of warmth. And this is where you'll find the biggest change of the overall tone of the image is going to come in. So you can see as we bring that down, we really start to influence the amount of those warm sunshine tones that are in there in that sunset. This is something you can do to taste to make sure you've got exactly what you want, but you can see a big difference. So again, let's take a look at before. There's our starting image, and this is where we are now. So we have a much more impactful sunset going on there. So to wrap this up, we're just going to go back in now and make one final alteration, and that's going to be the overall RGB channel where we can adjust some of the tonal information in the image and not influence the colors independently like we've done so far. Again, we're going to add a couple of extra points in. So we've got an extra point for the shadows, for the midtones, and for the highlights. Then we've got the blacks in the bottom left and the whites in the top right. What we're going to do is we're going to crush the blacks in this a little bit. So we're going to grab the black point. And we're going to lift that up slightly to give it a nice sort of modern crushed black look. We're then going to come down to the mid-tones. And we're going to pull those down just to get a bit more impact in this. It's going to give us much more contrast in there. We go crazy with this. and You can see it really does have a big impact. Again, don't go too mad with this, but obviously it's entirely to your taste. So there we go. That's looking pretty good. And we're going to give the highlights just the ever so slight kick. So I'm going to tweak this to get exactly where I want. So you can see I'm just making this S curve, getting some nice tonal definition in there. Let's take a look now where we started and where we've ended up. And there we go. That wraps up the tutorial, how we can use just the tone curve to make some serious changes to the color and the tonal information in an image without using any other tools. Well, I hope you found this technique useful and I hope you can put it into play in your images to help boost them and get something just a little bit special from your work. If you did enjoy the video and you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, take care.